In this video, we will explore what cybersecurity is all about. And in order to do that, we're going to answer some questions. Questions like, you know, what is cybersecurity in the first place? Why do we need it? Who do we need to protect against? And what needs to be protected? When we talk about cybersecurity, one of the first things always comes to mind is hackers. You know, hackers are trying to break into my computer system. And that leads to questions such as, why are they doing this? Who are they? What are they after? How are they doing it? Um, and why are they not getting caught? And hopefully throughout this course, um, we can answer some of those questions and get a better understanding of what this whole cybersecurity domain is all about. So before we can start talking about who those hackers are, we have to acknowledge the fact that data by itself, even though you cannot touch it, is something that is potentially at least very valuable. Um, and because it is valuable, it must be protected. The goal of cybersecurity is to keep assets free from intrusion. That's the same thing as with regular physical security. And we put a fence around the property to keep people off that property. We do the same thing with cybersecurity. We put in all kinds of countermeasures to keep people out of the computer systems and away from the data um, if they shouldn't be there. Um, or if they should not be doing certain things with that data, even if they do have legitimate access to it. We can summarize that in three key um, concepts that are often um, considered to be the basis of cybersecurity. And that is confidentiality, integrity, and availability, the CIA triad. Confidentiality just means what it sounds like. You know, make sure that information that shouldn't be publicly known is indeed not publicly known. Integrity has a couple of meanings and we'll go into more detail about that. But in principle, it means that you don't want any unauthorized changes. It's okay to change things if it was supposed to be changed. Um, but if it wasn't, uh, part of the goal of cybersecurity is to keep sure, make sure that data and computer systems um, don't make changes to data that shouldn't be made. <clears throat> and then lastly, there's availability. We have to make sure that our computer systems are indeed available to us when we need them. Together, this is known as the CIA triad. As mentioned before, confidentiality is all about secrecy to an extent. Although secrecy means that no one should know about something, and that's not the case when it comes to confidentiality. Confidentiality means that only authorized people should know about data or what's in particular types of data. So only authorized people with authorized access should be able to access data, just to look at it. Integrity comes breaking down in two subcategories. Um, one is data integrity, which basically means that the data should not be changed without authorization by authorized people. But we also have systems integrity, which is exactly the same concept, only now it applies to a computer system. We want a computer system to behave the way that we want it to behave as the owner of the system or the operator of the system, not as someone else. And if we can somehow ensure that, that no one can walk up to a computer or access a computer remotely over the network and make it do things that we didn't want it to do, then we have system integrity. And availability just means that the system is available when it's needed. Cybersecurity is an adversarial discipline. That means that we're always um, in a mindset of us versus them. And for that, it's important to realize who we are and who they are. Um, and if you look at that from enough distance, what you'll see in cybersecurity is that it's not a binary uh, separation. It's not, you know, um, attacker defender necessarily or good guy, bad guy. Um, it's three distinct roles that we can distinguish. First, we have the builders. The builders are the people who build systems that are defensible. Um, then we have the defenders. Those are the people who actually operate the systems and make sure that they are being defended. You need both. You need systems that are capable of being defended and then you need people who actually do the defense by itself. Take an analogy. It's great to have a building um, that has, say, an intruder alarm in it, 
Um, so you know, if someone walks around in the building, a big siren goes off. That means the building is in principle defensible. But if no one shows up when that alarm rings or you know, nothing is done, then it's not being defended. So we need both. We need the builders and we need the defenders. And then the third one is the breakers. Those are the people who try to bypass those defenses. Note that I really make a strong point not try to use terms like the good guys and the bad guys. Good and bad is a subjective measure. It uh, is something that depends on your perspective. Breakers, builders and defenders, that's objective. You can always see that. And you know, in some cases, the persons breaking into a system are the good guys. It could be an intelligence operative in, uh, looking after national security, or it could be some cyber warfare operation by, say, the U.S. military. And at that point, they would be the attackers, and whoever the adversary is would be the defenders. Well, on the other hand, we can switch this around just as easily. It could be a foreign entity trying to break into our computer systems, and at that point, we are the defenders and they are the attackers. But good and bad are things we try to stay away from. So then the question becomes, who are the attackers? Now, we can put individual names on them, but that's not very effective. So we'd rather look at categories of attackers. And there's a few of them. Um, for example, there could be a category of a criminal. A criminal is interested in you know, low risk, high gain. Um, they're trying to make money by doing something that the law prohibits. And ideally, they'd like to do it in a way that they don't get caught very easily. We have hacktivists. Those are people who are not in uh, the game for financial gain. Um, they are looking to make a point. They are driven by ideology. Um, and that means that, unlike a criminal, a hacktivist doesn't necessarily mind getting caught. And getting caught, and maybe even getting arrested, only means more exposure for the cause, and we have martyrdom. So hacktivists are more dangerous in some aspects than criminals are because they don't mind getting caught. We have nation-state adversaries. Well, a nation-state is something to be a little concerned about because a nation-state is typically um, an entity that hires people who are highly skilled, who have time, <clears throat> who have money and resources, and basically whose job it is to break in or defend an, against uh, break in. And so where hacktivists and criminals know that they are doing something illegal, a nation state is doing exactly what they should be doing because they're on payroll for doing this. You know, nine to five, I break into foreign entities and there's no risk for them for getting caught because they are doing their job. They're highly uh, skilled, uh, they're highly educated in many cases, and they're well-funded. Plus, they have time under most circumstances. So that's a very dangerous um, group to have to deal with. And then the last group is our script kiddies. The script kiddies, sometimes known as kiddies, you know, those are people who are driven by curiosity and don't give much thought to anything else. The fact that they might be doing something that's illegal probably never even occurred in their mind. The fact that they might be causing damage is something that is not a strong consideration on their part. It's just like, ooh, look, I have this technology. Let's see if it works. And oops, it did work. Now what? And so in that uh, respect, a script kitty can be potentially dangerous because they don't look necessarily for consequences. The good news is with script kiddies is that they often don't have a very highly developed uh, technical skill set, which means that if you're just practicing basic security hygiene, in many cases you can um, very effectively defend against script kiddies. There's always the exceptions, but that's really um, the key lesson there. And that's it for this video. So in terms, cybersecurity is all about confidentiality integrity and availability of data and systems. It's all about authorization, authorized um, access to look at the data, authorized access to manipulate data or to create or delete data and to make sure that systems are available. When we're dealing with roles and responsibilities in cybersecurity, we distinguish three main roles, the builders, the breakers and the defenders. Each plays their own part. 
And then when we look at who those um, attackers are, we often break those out in uh, criminals, in hacktivists, in nation states, um, and in script kiddies. With that, uh, we have an initial understanding of what we're dealing with. Next, we'll take a look at what attacks look like and what defenses look like.